Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tennessee Fats and today we're doing a mail opening. Now this isn't some tiny little mail opening where I open it up and there's maybe three or four books in it. It's not a Kickstarter, it's not some crazy mystery thing. This is just a massive, massive bundle of books. And I felt it's only appropriate to share this one. So this one's gonna be a long one. So for those of you who enjoy mail openings, stick around. And for those of you who enjoy image comics, stick around. You're gonna be surprised with what's in this one. For those of you who want to see more Robert E. Howard stuff, well, feel free to skip this video and we'll see you in the next one. And for those of you who really want to hear me bitch and moan about something, I'm going to throw in a little something extra at the end for you. Okay, we are back. All right, now, we are going to get into this in two stages, all right? First box actually is a smaller box that came within the overall bundle. And all this stuff arrived on the same day, and all of this, magically, is from the exact same seller. And for those of you who have watched my videos before, uh, you know that I've got stuff from uh, Flip Mode Comics. This is a small bundle that I got from them. Let's take it open. It's a small box, obviously well packed. One thing I will say for these guys, they do a fantastic job in their packaging. Like a vault, I believe is the phrase I use repeatedly for them. And you know what the funny part about this one was? This came out USPS, and they didn't seem to treat these boxes like soccer balls. Shocking. Sorry, not USPS, UPS. And for those of you who are wondering what that reference is, you can go back to one of my other videos that I actually put up here where I got a box that was, I believe, what, 15, 20 pounds of box comics? And the box was squishy. That was just gross. Literally, the Handle With Care sticker clearly meant to use UPS on that one. Hey, let's treat this like a soccer ball, step stool, and everything else we could possibly do. So I've given you guys more view of my workspace here on this particular video because we're going to have, although this one is a small one, larger boxes shortly, and they are going to need the space. They're going to have to explore the space. So we'll get to that then. Now, I mentioned earlier that for those of you who like Image Comics, you might want to stick around in this video, and there's a reason for that. There is actually Image Comics in these bundles. I'm not one of those comic speculator guys, and I'm not going to come in here and say, hey, uh, you know, here's uh, Tennessee Fat's top fit, my top 10 buys right now, and if you're not buying these, oh boy, are you losing money, because that's stupid. What I am going to do, though, is tell you one of the fundamental things that happens in, in buying comics and collecting comics, and this is, this is true in all things, um, if you want to do well financially by something, you buy it low and you sell it high. I know, that, that fundamentally it's a strange thing. Buy low and sell high. Uh, if you listen to a lot of comic speculators out there and resellers, they don't seem to get the whole issue of the low part. But, you know, one thing that I am going to say is there's a lot of, I'm going to say, mm, late 90s. Yeah, I'm going to say late 90s. That's a good generalization. There. Late 90s, early 2000 image books, um, which I think right now, quite frankly, what the market's missing out on. And, and we're going to see some of those in here today. Um, I honestly believe that the market is really missing the boat here in what they could buy and, and really for a long-term hold, what's a smart move? Because we all know the story of Image Comics in the early 1990s, and they were producing like millions of copies of books, and you know what, so was Valiant, uh, so was Marvel, so was DC. It was the terrible thing that led up to the crash. And what came with that was, oh, quite frankly, but a whole bunch of people losing their shirts because they were buying stuff they didn't really know what they were doing. Because there's this whole idea of, hey, I'll run into the market and I'll do really well by it. Well, running into the market and doing, trying to do well by something you don't understand is never going to work. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. So for those of you who are wondering, you probably wanna buy what you know. But what happened, as I say, they were producing these millions of books and millions of books and millions of books. But at the end of the day, in the late 90s, they weren't. Uh, their print runs were pretty low. And the characters were continuing because these were owner, um, well, creator-owned books, and quite frankly, but they want them to continue. This is, this is the thing. If they're going to continue to make money on them, they're going to continue to produce them. So Spawn was continuing, uh, Savage Dragon was continuing. A lot of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not oh, word, name. Uh, a lot of the Rob Liefeld titles, unfortunately, didn't continue. They, well, they had small starts and then small stops again. Uh, so if you have the opportunity, as I say, that, that's a roundabout way of getting to it, if you have the opportunity to buy late 90s, early 2000 image books, which were pretty low print runs, uh, in minty condition, do so. Okay, there, there's my random rambling aside for the beginning of this one. So let's go with the first bundle here. First bundle we got in here was a bundle of soups. 
We all know I like my Supermans. I do like my Supermans. It's a thing with me. He's my first favorite superhero. He remains my favorite superhero to this day. And probably just because, I don't know. You know, I don't identify with him. It's like I have superpowers and all like that. I'm not some crazy egoist that thinks, oh, I'm the strongest. That's not me. Um, for some reason, I still just like the character. So what do we got here? You got Action Comics number 182. Ooh. Pretty fancy. It's even got a date stamp up there. May the 16th, or say May the 29th. Ah, with thrilling western trails. Oh. And somebody's initials are RL. Good on. What do we got over here? Uh, Superman number 196. Now, some kid has cut the... I don't know why. why what would make you think to cut that? That's weird. Here we go. Uh, sure, he has great po greater powers than I have, Lois, but he's only an imaginary hero. But he's real, and there he is now. Oh my goodness. The Adventures of Mental Man. Whoa. Superman's getting jealous. Oh my. Ah! This is actually the book that made me buy this bundle Giant Superman Annual Issue 4. This is a nice condition, actually. It's a black cover. Hard to get this one in any sort of condition that looks like this. The square binding on this, actually, I didn't think this was going to come out this good. Square binding on this is actually really sharp. I don't know if you can see, you can see the edge there. That is a nice edge. I, I've seen this many times, and unfortunately, I've never seen it with the opportunity where I can buy it, where it's in good condition. And this is looking sharp, looking very sharp. I like that. That was the book that was the reason why I ended up picking up this bundle. Ah, Superman number 124. Oh, yeah. Look at that. On guard, Superman, the last time we dueled, I wounded you. This time, my magic sword will slay you. Yeah, that is his weakness, right? Magic. So, very, very cool. Superman number 113. Oh, we're going back in time here. My father, Krypton, was a Superman too, and he had to protect the queen the way I do Lois. Why would Krypton have a queen? I don't ever remember there being any Superman story in which Krypton had a queen. Huh. Very cool. Water damage across the top, but what are you going to do? These are all woo Adventure comics. Superboy meets Robin. Sweet. Why are you smashing my trophy, prize trophy, the cosmic clock? My name is Robin. I've come from the year 1958 to destroy your trophy now, so I won't destroy you in the future when you grow up to be Superman. Oh, well, this clock is clearly going to get him. Good job, Robin. You, uh, you get in there with your fancy green tights to solve that problem. Oh, here, oh, look at this. It's another. We just had the story of... Hold on, we'll back over here. Where was it? No, I don't know. Ah, here you go. There's a story here of Superman's father being Superman. And here's another. Picture of my father, jor -El. How could he be Superman here on Earth? There's a lot of, of very weird stories back in the day with Superman and his father. Um, there was one, for example, it's actually in a Lois Lane issue that I actually unboxed here on the channel, uh, where Lois Lane went back in time because she couldn't have Superman. She decided to go back in time and go to the planet Krypton to woo Superman's father, Jor-El. Now, if that ain't creepy, I don't know what is. That, that is, that is seriously effed up, yo. There, there's my statement on that. Oh, here you go. Now, this was, what is this, spawn number 100 and I think it's 65? Yes. There you go. Spawn 165. All right, I talked about some of the later ones that are low print runs, but there, if you can get them mint, you get them. This is the first appearance of Mandarin Spawn. That's very cool. Now, I have not seen Mandarin Spawn show up in any of the sworn titles that are out right now or any of the uh, expanded Spawn universe, but very cool. Very, very cool. And I don't think I've ever seen this. And this is, yeah, when they said minty, they meant minty. Holy crap. That's nice. Now I'll have to get it out and take a look at it and look at the back as well. That's one thing with comics. You can never see the back one in the back and forth. But I will check that out. Now what else? Oh, here we go. Not a image comic, but a classic Spider-Man cover. Amazing Spider-Man number 569. Now you're getting a lot of glare. You can actually see my phone and the screen pointing down. That's a very cool because of the black cover. You see, woo, it's moving. Anyway, it's like... 3D Vision. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is SCTV 3D Vision right here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, you guys wouldn't get that joke, but never mind that now. Very cool cover. This has been redone a couple times, this particular cover. And I think I have some of the covers, but I didn't have the original one. And this, I believe, is the first appearance of the Anti-Venom. Yeah, it's the first appearance of the Anti-Venom. 
cool. Something to hold on to. I, I, I'm, again, I'm not speculating on that. I'm saying, hey, you know, there's going to be a lot of ants even. Ooh, here, watch this. I'll say this, and this will suddenly become a YouTube thing, and then I'm going to see this on Instagram. You know what I hear, guys? I hear the anti-venom is going to appear in Multiverse, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, yeah, just wait. Just, just wait. If I said that once, I can guarantee you somebody else is going to say that a couple times. And you're going to see that go all over the interwebs. And then you're going to see all the people saying, oh, you got to get your anti-venom covers out. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't know if you can pick up from the tone of my voice. Perhaps I'm getting a little jaded with the, uh, the comic market. I think probably the thing that was blowing me the way the most lately, and it does have to do with multiverse madness, and this is a bit of me going off on a tirade here, but you're getting it anyway, so deal with it. I think what's happening here is you've got this point now where the minute anybody thinks, hey, I've got this opportunity to say there's going to be some character out there that's going to appear in this movie, come by the first appearance, which used to be a dollar store or a dollar bin book uh, for $100, they do it. And... I get that. I, I get it. But at the end of the day, like, for example, uh, what's his name? Johnny Walker, who became the Captain America in, what was that, the early 1990s? Later became U.S. agent. Like, when that Falcon and Winter Soldier series came out, all those books, which were typically, you know, two or three bucks, suddenly people are selling them for 40 bucks a book. Now the series has been out for a while. How many of us have gone out and spent $40 a book on those books lately? Nobody. Nah. Anyways. All right, anyways. Again, we're talking about some, some other image books here. Spawn number 142. Very nice book on that one. Spawn number 157. Whoa. That is a cool cover. Check that out. Sick. Nice. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, spawn number 210. Very sweet. And, oh, huh, they put a post note on this that said, Mincy AF. <laughs> I agree. Uh, spawn number 187. Sweet books. I don't think there's any particular, like, first appearance or anything like that in this bundle, but it was, it, it's a minty bundle, and it's, it's a nice bundle there. All right, so that's the first box we got. The next ones we're not going to go through with quite the same level of detail here because, and, and you're going to see why in a second, because when I said big boxes, I meant big boxes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. Let's just tear into this bad boy and we'll see what we got here. So again, it's a uh, UPS special. Let's tear into it. And I did have to pay duties on these. Uh, I do not like duties. Nobody likes duties. Actually, you know, some people do like duties. And who am I to judge? Okay. Okay, what do we got? Oh, okay. One. Two. Oh, he's heavy. And, oh my goodness. Three. All right, now, and toss this box to the side. Oh yeah, that felt good. So I got three of these. Now I know these are all part of the same run. Okay, I did just say the word run. All right, bear with me. Bear with me. Yeah, that box is big, but this one. Oh, no, no. Shake the whole area. It's bigger. Oh, spilled my coffee. My goodness. Okay. Ow. I just poked myself with my knife. That's stupid. My God. All right, here we go. Boop, 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 boop. D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D. I gotta get this one this way. Wow, it really doesn't matter. Come on. Hey, there we go. Okay. Holy chip. Okay, you know, when I say these guys ship like a vault, I mean they ship like a vault. Look what they did here to protect this. Holy. Dude, the, the amount of time. It would have, it's like pizza boxes. It's like I'm at a frat party and they're pizza boxes. Look at this box a little bit. Where you go? Look at them all. Sweet Jesus. All right, well, um, I don't know which one's going to be first. Um, so we're just going to open them. Uh, are they ready? No, they all just say Tennessee Fat. So that's me, by the way. Tennessee. I love that. Anyway, um, 
I don't know, mini, 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 mo. Uh, this one. Okay, <sighs> that'll be you. Now, when I open the first one of these, you're suddenly going to get a sense of what it is I'm talking about here. And that earlier comment, that whole diatribe you heard with me with regards to Image Comics in the late 1990s. And also me, tirading away against speculators. And if you're a speculator, I apologize, but, and you know, it's nothing personal. I don't have an issue with your industry. What I have is an issue with everybody flooding to it and then saying it's gospel. Well, that I do take an issue. People should think before they do certain things. The other thing that I would say is an idiom that my grandmother taught me, and which I still remember to this day, a fool and his money are soon parted. And of course, I'm saying that while I'm opening comic books, so. Yeah, 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 I take everything with a grain of salt. All right, here we go. Let's see what the first book is here, and this is gonna just give the whole thing away. What do we got here? Savage Dragon number 50. So, what this is, this is a complete run of Savage Dragon, all of these boxes. It's a complete run of Savage Dragon number one through, I believe it's 174. Uh, and in that, I know there are certain books that people go a little wacky for. Uh, I know, and I know when they were showcasing this on my channel, they were talking about there are some books in here that are $500 books in and of themselves. Well, I tell you, I'm not too concerned about some of the books being $500 books themselves. When I saw this opportunity to buy Savage Dragon, who I think is possibly one of the most underrated image comic characters from the 90s that's just sort of been forgotten, just as a standalone character, not a team, uh, none of these superhero groups, just one particular dude. I think this guy has just been running along, and Eric Larson's been doing a great job with this series, by the way. If any of you have been reading recent issues, and, and what I do like with him is he's not afraid to bring in topics that are somewhat, I wouldn't even say risque, he's just not afraid to speak his mind, which I think is a really valuable thing in today's society, because everybody seems to be afraid of actually saying what they think. And, and I think that's sad. Uh, in a nation that's built on free speech, that we've lost the ability to actually have that free speech because we're terrified that our neutral statements are going to be deemed just inappropriate, even though they're just neutral statements, which is silly. Anyway, there, there's my old man Tennessee Fats rant for the day. Uh, but I do believe that Savage Dragon as a character has been underrated for almost 30 years now. And the character has gone through some major changes. And, and it, I did get a bundle of these I picked up out of the dollar bins years ago that were, see, there were numbers in, I believe, the 30s. They went to 30, I think I got up to maybe 50. So I'm gonna have duplicates of those, and that's fine. But now I have all the rest of it. And I know a lot of people are gonna be really hurt when I say this. I'm going to read these. Yeah, I'm actually going to get them out and read them. Um, so I can actually enjoy these. Because the guy's art style, Eric Larson's art style, I think is fantastic. Uh, I think his content is also fantastic. I think the tongue-in-cheek humor that he's got within his stories is also fantastic. And this will give him the opportunity to just read it all, which is really nice. Like, there's number 49. As I say, it was a complete run. It's a complete run. 48. 46. 45. 44. Like, these things are just completely out there. 43. And, and they're great. Like, I, I really love the ability that this guy has to just draw in. And he's done a great job. Oh, there's an early Hellboy appearance right there. Uh, Hellboy. There's, there's another Hellboy right there. And he's drawn in a lot of comic nostalgia. I mean, in the stories that I read, there were somewhere where the Savage Dragon was, I believe, in the afterlife. And the character, it was so Kirby-esque, it was ridiculous. So this is actually really a fun thing for me to actually have all of these. Like, that's just one, you know what we'll do? We'll open one more box now. Yeah, I probably did that wrong. Yeah. Oh, that was a duplicate of that. We got two of number 43. Very nice. And I know when they, they, they also found, and they said they were gonna throw into this, was uh, the Malibu Sun issue that actually had the Savage Dragon busted out on it. I think that, I think that actually did predate Savage Dragon limited series number one. Uh, so that, that's kind of cool and I'm glad that I'll have that too. We'll do one more of these and then and we'll call it a let's, let's, This one's the fattest of the bunch. Let's open it up. Snick. Gentle now, gentle. Gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle. Easy, easy. Okay. Charlie Brown's are both. Alright. Space. Charlie Brown, that is, by the way. 
Space Charlie Brown is going on vacation with me this year. Oh, he's gonna have a good time. What's in this one? Number 79, Attack of the 60 Foot Woman. 78. 77. Oh, wild, a wild start. That, yeah, another character that was kind of an odd one in image, but pretty cool. 77. I think he actually wiped himself out of existence in his own story. 76. And there was one issue that's actually recalled. 75. I believe it was like 132, I think. And the recalled version is in this bundle. There's an issue in the 140s that I want as well. Now, I don't expect that to be in this bundle. That issue in the 140s is the one where they did a second print of it, where he was endorsing Barack Obama. Uh, and that's a really expensive book now. 112. 111. Very cool. Uh, I believe it is the second edition of that. Oh, yeah, so here's the, here's the next. What does it say? It says it's missing 139, 148, 171, and 172. And this is number 1 through 176. Very cool, 102, 110, 109, 66, okay, well, we'll have to spend some, 67, I have to spend some time putting these in order. Oh yeah, yeah, there's the original, now this is not the miniseries, or is this the miniseries? Number two, no, I think this is the regular series. Number 30, wow, 155. Oh. This dude not only has a goatee and a pirate patch, look at all the skulls in his outfit. Oh, that's the shit. Okay, hold on, 150. This is so cool. Okay, again, the covers are just awesome. 58. Hey, hey. I recognize this look. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. 160. Oh, the original Daredevil. Pretty cool. Oh, and from Continuity Comics. Pretty cool. Very neat. Okay, all right. All right, we're not gonna go through these anymore because I can sit here and go through these one at a time and, well, quite frankly, but y'all ain't gonna enjoy that. And I'll probably just put them in order and then I'll go through them one at a time at home when I'm actually reading them, uh, which I'm thoroughly going to enjoy. Good buy on this. That, that was a good bundle there. I am quite excited with that. And as I said, this is a big bundle. And I know there's no keys in this. And you guys did hear, get to hear me do a tie right there. Little one there as to why I think you should be buying some of the 90s and early 2000s image books, because quite frankly put, they're gonna come back to this. We as a, as a collecting society will come back to this. So just prep for it, guys. If you're sitting here thinking, I can't afford some really big books, these might be something smaller along the way. And if you are one of these people who believes in CGCing your books, maybe CGC them if you're gonna get your 9.8s, if you really wanna protect them. I can't say do that though, because honestly, I, I don't do that. Uh, I honestly think that whole thing's just going to blow up in everybody's faces down the road, but that's that's just me doom saying. Anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, this is where I'm going to wrap it up for the regular unboxing. Uh, we're going to go to black screen here, and then we're going to come back and we're going to have a... Uh, normally I would call this a fireside chat, but it's not going to be a fireside chat. I'm going to be having some words where I'm bitching and moaning. For those of you who want to skip that, you can just end this one here. I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, so that was a big opening. There was a lot of stuff in there, and I didn't go through all those books. Quite frankly, but I don't think anybody wants to sit around and literally watch 45 minutes of me picking up one book at a time and saying, and this is this, and this is this, and this is this. But it was a chat where we had a chance where we were going through a whole bunch of Image stuff, which I still support to this day. I think Image and Valiant, if you're out there and you're digging through dollar bins, I, I think there's more opportunity for upside there. Even if it's a long-term speculation and gamble, just a probability game than there is in, in most other stuff that you're gonna pick up. That, that moot point, I've already discussed it enough. That's not what we're here for. So now, I tell you, I typically like to keep things open, happy, and light of this channel. And the reason why I do that is because, well, there's enough negativity in the world. There really is. And I'm not gonna sit here and pull out some Bible verse or anything of the sort and try to up, uplift your spirits. But I'll tell you, if you've made a YouTube channel where you're doing nothing but bitching and moaning about the industry, you're probably not enjoying it. Comics are supposed to be fun. Uh, they really are. Uh, it's a hobby. This is something for you to enjoy doing. And I tell you, the thing I get the most joy out of every month is when I go to my local comic shop and I pick up my son's Sonic the Hedgehog comic, which is on a pull list for me. 
And I'm all excited every time I'm in there. I'm like, ooh, it's a Sonic. And I'm all excited because I get to go home and I get to give him that book. And he says thank you to me. And he legitimately means it. And he enjoys reading them. And he reads them each. And he's got a comic book box there. And it's, it's quite funny. He's got his comic box in there. And he's got all of his Sonic comics in it. Uh, which none of them are in bags of boards. They're all just sitting there. It's, I'm sure somebody's going to say, oh, you just tried I don't care. They're for fun for a kid. Now, when you reach the, the, the level that I'm at, well, fine. You're collecting now. And that's fine. And, and you know what? You might be reading while you're collecting. And there are certain things that I read while I'm collecting, hence the Robert E. Howard cons on the channel. But I'll tell you, what I don't get is, uh, is the anger around the hobby. Uh, so that, again, is why I try to keep it light here. And this is why I typically would, wouldn't have even shot this. But it's only when I step back and I looked at the big picture on this and I said, mm, you know what? No, I, I actually do have an issue with this. So it's time for a bitch and moan session with Tennessee Fats. So let me show you something here, just real quick. This is a manila envelope. And let's take a look here. Somebody stamped it, do not bend. But it's a manila envelope. I don't feel anything in here other than a floppy paper. So this isn't some reseller either. And this is the reason why we're having this chat. And, and I'm gonna be negative on this. And, and quite frankly, if it weren't publishing, you got to up your game here. You had a chance and you lost it. I'll tell you, one of the things I've done recently is, because you guys know I, I read black and white magazines of comics as well. I really like well, Hyborian Age stuff. But there's Vampirous Camilla comics, or magazines that came out. And, and I've been picking some of them up. And I was going to my local comic shop, or one of my local comic shops, and I had them on a pull list there for me. And every time I got them, I was saying to myself, geez, you know, what is with these books? Why, why is it every time I'm getting it, like by the time I'm leaving the store, I haven't even left the store yet. It's already got uh, dog-eared corners. It's already got spine ticks. It's, it's, it's... And there's something else I've noticed is that for some reason on the front covers along the spine, I keep getting this white blemish on it. And initially I thought that was, you know, a, a rub where the, the print had rubbed off. But then I felt it, like ran my finger over it, took a good look at it with a black light and all sorts of stuff. And no, it's, it's just a production issue. It's, so they're not produced really well. The paper within them, I'll be honest, it's crap. The ink is crap. It comes off in your fingers. It's old newsprint uh, type print. Uh, when you're reading it, it's like, oh man. Um, but I've been saving them. I've been doing what I normally do with things that I collect. I read it, I put it in a nice bag and board, and I catalog it and put it away. And unfortunately, what happened was my, one of this, well, this particular local comic shop um, forgot my pull. Just decided one, about one month, ah, we're just not going to pull them for you anymore. And at that point in time, I was like, well, they're not really in great shape when I get them anyways. Maybe I should just order them directly from Warrant and just call it a day. And maybe I'm going to get them better that way. So I, I, I made a mental note to do that. But as, as I've mentioned on this channel many times, I'm old, so I forget things. And I forgot this. But I finally remembered it. And that's why the two dates were written on the front of this in cursive. On January the 8th of 2022, it occurred to me, hey, you're sitting in front of a computer. Go order these. Because you can order them online without sending any coupons out of your comics. So I did on January 28th. Then I forgot about it because, again, I'm old. Well, a box arrived. Not a box, actually. This floppy manila envelope arrived on, well, it didn't actually arrive on. It arrived probably within five days of March the 7th, two months later. And the reason I know March the 7th is an important date and I wrote it on here is because that's the date when Warrant Publishing actually got off their ass and decided to ship my order. So January 8th to February 8th, February 8th to March the 7th, two months. Two months goes by, nobody ships it. Nobody emails me to say, hey, it's going to be delayed in shipping. Nothing of the sort. That doesn't make me feel that good. And it's, it's funny, you know, literally, it would have been better off for Warrant if they just didn't ship this. Because I would have completely forgotten this and I never would have been actually recording this video and I wouldn't have been dissatisfied to this level. But here I am dissatisfied now. I'm dissatisfied now to the point where I'm like, this is stupid. Like, it's, two months is one thing. But this, this, this... Let's open this up here and see how these fare. This is going to be good. So within this, because the one issue that I did miss was issue one. So I paid extra and I ordered a good copy of issue one. So I said, hey, I'll get issue one, I'll get it into the house, and that'll be great, and then I can have my run. 
I'll fill it out and I'll just pick up other ones elsewhere as, as I'm going along here. But no, no. So, yeah. Let's just, yeah, okay. Do you see the curve of the books? Do you see that? Do we see this right here? Okay, look at this. This has just been bent. This was what was in that envelope. Okay, full transparency. Is there anything else in this envelope? Not even a board. Somebody over there said to themselves, no, no, it's all right. We'll just take three magazines and toss them in an envelope. Now, when I ordered this, there wasn't anywhere online where I could say to myself, hey, you know, I have the option of paying for superior quality shipping where maybe it's going to be bumped up and be a little more protected. No, I had no choice. This was just how it came. So I'll tell you, warrant. I'm gonna read these because, you know, I've already paid 50 bucks for this stupid order to read them. And then I'm gonna take my other books, which are bagged and boarded already, which I spent the money to bag and board on my own, out of their bags and boards. And once I'm done reading these, I'm just going to use them all for target practice because there's no point in saving these. Two months, you had an opportunity to let me know I'm gonna ship this, you never did. It just came out shipped two months later. And you didn't even take the time to try to protect. This is the 2023 annual, by the way, which is a square dot. You didn't even take the time to try to protect this at all. Like, So for all of you out there who are watching this, who wanted to hear a Tennessee Fats bitch and moan section, that's pretty much the extent of bitch and moaning you're gonna get from me. If I'm spending money on something and I get hosed, you're gonna hear about it. Uh, I see absolutely no point in trying to reach out to Warrant about this directly because what are they gonna do? They're gonna refund me my money? I strongly doubt that because nowhere online did it actually say, I'm sure it didn't say, hey, we're gonna ship this out to you and it's gonna be protected in a great condition. That's just an expectation as a comic collector when you order something as to how it's gonna to get to you. And I guess that expectation may be being missed by their shipping and receiving guys. So yeah, good times, good times.